So as a follow-up to my post from yesterday, where I talked about um, finding a way to exercise that you love and that you deserve to love how you move. And that I believe that exercise should be about celebrating what our bodies can do, not punishing them. I don't think that exercise is something you need to suffer through. I don't think it's something that has to be a box you check off your to-do list. And I think the language around exercise and movement plays a huge role in that. So when I hear and see people talking about exercise as, oh, that workout kicked my ass, or this was a killer workout, or a trainer says something like, oh, you're going to hate me after you do this move, that's punishment. And then there becomes a mindset that unless you're doing something that feels so intense and so challenging that you basically feel like you have to, you're going to collapse after it, then it's not effective or it's not working or it's not exercise. Um, and that's just not true. Um, it's good to feel strong and empowered and feel like your body is moving things and to feel the intensity of, of picking up a, a heavy object or a heavy weight. Yes, I agree with that. But there are absolutely ways to do it in which it's a celebration and an empowerment of your body, not a punishment. And so I just, I'm more and more going to be talking about this because I feel really strongly about it. And I think that so many people are alienated by the language that's out there in the fitness and exercise world. Um, so I really enjoy working with people who don't find themselves fitting into kind of a gym environment or don't really know how to approach exercise because the messaging that's out there is all about like no pain, no gain. And you've got to do this killer workout and this is how you're going to get results. And you need to do high intensity interval training to burn more calories. Um, you need to do a boot camp class. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything. Um, you need to move. Yes, you have to move. But there are so many options within that to be well, to be fit. So now that I've talked quite a bit, I'm going to show you a movement that I love and a great way to progress it to add more load so it becomes more of a strength mood, uh, movement. So you're going to use a slider. I have an actual slider. You can use a paper plate or if you're on a, a hardwood floor, you can use a sock on your hand or a um, washcloth. And I really like to use a visual of a clock. So I'm envisioning that there's a clock on the ground, a really big clock. 12 is in front, 6 is behind, 3 to the right, 9 to the left. And I'm going to take my slider and I'm going to reach it out to every number on this clock. Not in any particular order. In fact, I like doing it in kind of an all different, um, in different order than, you know, numerical. But I'm reaching to every different number. And the only thing I'm thinking about doing is reaching my hand and then the rest of my body is responding. And you could do this for kind of any length of time. And whether you're watching this or you've actually gotten out onto the floor and are experimenting it with yourself, notice all the movement that I'm getting through my body just by reaching my hand, shoulders, hips, spine, opposite arm, elbow. It's, it's amazing. This is one of my favorite things to do. You can also do this with your hips. You put the slider underneath your foot, and you'll do the same thing. So you'll reach out and pull in and back behind you. And then you can cross over and pull the leg in and across. It's different. But you'll kind of experiment and see again and watch all the ways that the center of the body responds to how this foot is reaching to different numbers on the clock. And you would do this with both legs. And then a fun and interesting way to progress it, right? So that's kind of like a nice mobility exercise. You could progress that and make it more of a fun strength exercise by hovering your knees up off the ground. So knees hover, and then now I've got to carry a lot of body weight on my one hand and my legs. And very quickly, your heart rate will get up. So sometimes we think that like strict cardio exercise, you know, speed walking, jogging, running, cycling is the only way to get um, your heart rate up. That's not true. There are lots of different strength exercises that will elevate your heart rate. And they give you these little bursts um, of cardiorespiratory work. And that's a really nice way to work that in. It becomes sort of like a, um, it's like this little mini sprint without actually sprinting. Your heart rate elevates 
uh, quick and fast, and then it goes back down. And you can do this with the lower body, right? So knees are hovering. I put the slider under my foot, and I'm moving around, sliding around, right? If this is too much for you, then you just keep the knees down and keep it as a mobility exercise, right? There's ways to customize and adapt for whatever you have going on. <clears throat> you can also elevate your hands onto blocks or onto a chair and do that, and it'll take some of the load off the upper body. Hope you guys enjoy that. Please share your thoughts, your questions, your comment, comments. If you're someone who feels like they don't know where their place is in the world of exercise, please reach out. I would love to help you um, because there is a place for all of us and there is a place to celebrate movement and celebrate our bodies for all of the amazing things that they're capable of.